In this video, we're gonna talk about our top five most surprising things we've noticed from our one and a half years of being off grid with solar. Okay, number one, life has been very normal. Yeah, honestly, like I thought going off grid, we would have to sacrifice some things or change how we're living, but we really haven't at all. Um, we run our electric washer and dryer, fridges, freezers, AC, I mean, our range, everything um, pretty, effortlessly. I feel like we do pay attention to our solar intake, I guess, and how much we're using. Um, but really the only thing that changes is when I do stuff instead of doing laundry in the middle of the night, I do it in the afternoon when we're getting sun, things like that. Um, but I mean, most people come over to our house and have no idea that we even are off grid. Uh, our life is just super normal. Like we're not roughing it at all. Yeah, very, very normal. Number two is our connection with the sun. And this is probably the first thing that really stuck out to me after being off grid um, was just how aware I became of the sun. Looking back before we were off grid, I felt like life was just very disconnected from the sun and from the weather in general. We'd have stormy or cloudy days, but it didn't really affect life that much. But now the sun is such a huge part of our life. Yeah, sunny days just feel like such a gift, especially when our batteries are getting low and we're not sure if we're gonna make it when the sun comes out and it just shines endless energy into our solar panels that we capture and then we can use that, charges the batteries really quick. It's just, it's such a good feeling. And yeah, I feel like my relationship with the sun is something that I definitely didn't have before. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I feel like this is probably my favorite part of honestly being off grid is feeling way more connected to the outdoors, honestly. Um, I know every morning what time the sun rises, what time it goes down, where it's positioned in the, positioned in the sky, and I never knew that before, but it, I feel like it's added a lot of beauty to my life. And the sun, I feel like when I think about the sun now, the sun is the thing that helps us stay cool, it helps us preserve our food, it helps cook our food, it heats our water, um, yeah, really cool. Yeah, it does everything for us. <laughs> Number three, winter. This is our second winter. Last winter had quite a few surprises. This winter has also been really different, but also brought us a few more surprises as well. It just makes a di big difference. We get a lot less sun. Yeah, a lot less sun. The angle is very different. I never realized how different the angle of the sun is in the winter versus the summer. Um, but yeah, it, as well as the, the length of the days has a big effect on how much power we can bring in from solar. Summertime, we can bring in maybe 60 kilowatt hours max. Wintertime, kind of the shortest part of the year, it's closer to 20 kilowatt hours per day. Um, and that's huge when we're using about that every day. I've always wondered why people with off-grid systems still have generators, and this is definitely why it's pretty hard to generate all the power you need. Even this winter, we had a stretch of like a week and a half or two weeks of straight clouds where we were bringing in maybe two or three kilowatt hours per day. And you just can't. We usually use what, 15 yeah. kilowatt hours a day? But yeah, you just can't live off of three kilowatt hours per day. Life just doesn't look normal. So yeah, we've had to run the generator. And last winter, we only had to run the generator like twice. This winter, we had to run it almost every day for like a week. But yeah, lots of challenges. I guess one other thing to mention, when it snows, so we're in an area where we do get snow in the winter time. And one of the advantages to having a ground mount, which, which, what we, which is what we have, is you can clear the snow off the panels. If the solar panels were mounted on the roof, like we would have no chance. If you can't clear it off, you're not gonna make it through the day. So that's become kind of a new, a new ritual for me, clear the driveway, but also run mm -hmm. out and clear all three of our uh, solar panel arrays because if I don't, we're not gonna make it through with power for the day. Yeah, when we have storms coming through. Number four is our two problematic appliances and they're not the ones that you were thinking of. Yeah, so the AC, we kind of expected that we'd have some issues. I hope that we, our inverter would handle it fine. Um, but the locked rotor amps was just too high. I, we could start it about half the time, but then it would turn off our system and it wouldn't, 
yeah, it wouldn't be fun. I'd have to restart everything. But that was easily fixed with a soft start. It ramps up slowly and yeah, no issues. But we do have one that was <laughs> totally unexpected and it was actually pretty tricky to even figure out what appliance was causing the issue. Um, but it was our blender of all things. We have a Vitamix blender and on high it works totally fine, but on low, it'll shut down, it'll the, shut down the whole system. <laughs> yeah. And it's got a little better with some firmware updates. I've worked with Signature Solar and they've made improvements to the firmware and it doesn't actually shut the system down like it used to. Still not happy when we turn it on, the lights flicker and you can tell it doesn't, it doesn't like to power it. But something about our Vitamix low. running on low. Yeah. Of now all we things. only make smoothies on high speed, only use them on high speed. Yep. But I mean, Signature Solar has been really helpful to work with through that weird issue. <laughs> yeah, but it's been good. But yeah, those are pretty much the only two problems that we've had with our system as far as appliances go. The AC, which we are able to solve, no more issues with that. And then the blender. Um, and maybe we just need to get a new blender. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, the last on our list, number five. Surprisingly affordable. Yeah, so we, I mean, it took a long time planning out the system. I don't think we ever really considered going with, through a traditional solar company. Uh, we've always enjoyed doing projects ourselves. And especially when thing, we knew that solar was expensive going through traditional solar companies. So we kind of just planned from the beginning to do DIY. Uh, you know, over the course of many years, did research started buying our equipment. Yeah, we did the whole install after we moved into this house. And then we reached out to a family member who actually works for a solar company. And we asked him, hey, what would this cost if you were to build, bid this out through your solar company? So he put in all the stuff, ran the numbers, and it was over 80 grand, which it was crazy. Crazy. Um, so we paid 20 grand for everything and that's including all tools, all the materials. Um, I mean, obviously it doesn't include the time that we spent learning and doing all the work. But all the time. Yeah. It was years of Spencer doing research, learning about things, shopping deals for the best and cheapest prices on Black Friday. I mean, a million and a half hours of trenching and digging and pulling wire. I mean, it took a lot of time. Yeah, but 20 grand, compared to 80 grand, like, that's pretty crazy. Like, I didn't realize how expensive going through traditional solar companies actually is. And we've talked to other people and that number isn't outrageous. Like, that's a normal number for I Honestly, systems. a low number. For yeah. some people, they've gotten a lot, yeah, a lot less for way more. I've just kept thinking to myself, if when you like moved into a house, if your electric company was like, do you want to pay seven years up front of your electric bill? And then after the seven years, you just have free power from then on out. I would highly consider it. And we pretty much figured out with the 20,000 and um, the 30% back for the tax, tax credit. credit. Yeah. Um, that our system after seven years will have paid for itself. And so if we're going to live in our house more than seven years, like we literally will have free power. Day two, the camera died, but we're back. Just wanted to wrap up our thoughts. So the main reason why we wanted to go off the electrical grid with solar was for self-sufficiency and not for the cost benefits. We wanted to be able to produce all the power that our family needs regardless of what happens with the power grid. We also wanted to be able to serve our neighborhood and our community if we were ever in a situation where the power grid was down for a long time. What well, started out as just a dream then turned into just an experiment and now has become reality, which has been super cool and way rewarding. And I feel like if anyone else out there is thinking of trying to take their house off grid, you should definitely try it if you're able to. It is so worth it. And I mean, there will be surprises, but it's nothing that you can't figure out and get over. Um, anyways, it's very doable. Yeah, definitely look into the option of doing a DIY. If you can, you can save yourself a lot of money. And I think the skills that you learn are super valuable. But I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> See ya. In this video, we're gonna talk about our top five most surprising things we've noticed from our one and a half years of being off grid with solar. <laughs> oh, I'm such a bad actor. <laughs>